Understanding the code. With this block of code, the portion of JavaScript is going to be placed right into the code body. You will need to place this here in some occasions and other times you may want to put a command or something else in place of this to make it work the best for your code. For this part, the code was declared with the right attributes so that once this code is brought up on the web page, you are going to see the words, Welcome to JavaScript First Program, come up on your screen. This is basically going to be known as the output of the code that you just wrote. Keep in mind that you are able to make changes in the wording in this step so that it works for your program. The white spaces and line spaces. No matter what kind of coding language you are working with, there are often rules that come up concerning the number of line spaces and white spaces that are allowed. The compiler for each of these will read these spaces in different ways. Sometimes the compiler will read these spaces as important, so you will need to be really careful about how many returns and spaces you add into the code. Other times the compiler is going to just skip over the white spaces, so you are able to add in as many as you would like. When it comes to using JavaScript, the line breaks and spaces are not as important. The compiler is not going to read through them, so you could write out the code in one straight line if you want although this is not usually the best way to work because it makes the code really hard to read. Most programmers are going to use a format similar to what we wrote above because it makes the code look a bit nicer and spreads everything out for easier reading. Using the semicolon. As you may have noticed in the code above, there was a semicolon that came up with the message. When you are done writing out the statement, you should add in the semicolon. It is important to note that this semicolon is not the most important thing in the coding and that the compiler is going to be able to read through the code without it being there, but it is considered good programming form to make sure that the semicolon is in the right place. Case sensitivity. There are a few programming languages that are going to notice the differences between the uppercase and lowercase letters. They will see the lowercase l and the uppercase l as different things, while others would read these letters as exactly the same. When you are using JavaScript, the former is true, so you must pay attention to which case you are using. If you type in the wrong one when saving the function, it is going to be hard to bring that back up later when you need it. Comments. Another thing that you may want to use in your code are the comments. These are important because they are going to tell the other programmers what is going on within the code, and they can make it easier to explain what you are doing inside the code. The unique thing about these is that you will not see them show up when the code is executed. The compiler will see these comments and choose to just skip over them, allowing these comments to be useful to the people who are using the code, but ensuring that these comments don't come up and interrupt the code when it is being executed. You can pretty much have as many of these comments in your code as you like. You just need to make sure that you aren't adding in so many that you can't read the actual code, and you need to make sure that the right symbols are being used so that the compiler recognizes that the statement is considered a comment and it won't try to read that part. Some of the rules that you should follow when it comes to writing out the right symbols for your code include single line. If you are writing a block of code that is only going to take up one line, you will need to use the double slash in order to make it show up. Simply placing two forward slashes will show that the comment has started and the interpreter will just skip right over it. 